All right. Hello and welcome. My name is Kristen Anker, your parent empowerment specialist, kristenanker.com. I help overwhelmed and exhausted parents to learn effective discipline techniques to get on the same page, to gain their kids' cooperation, and to bring some peace and joy into your homes. We could all use a little peace and joy right now. I'm so excited to in, introduce you to Grania Forrest. Grania is a certified health and nutrition coach. And I've known Grania for about a year now, and I'm very excited to learn from her because healthy eating is something I thought I've always been pretty good at, but I know there's so much more I can do. And Grania, I would love for you to tell us a little bit about what does a nutrition coach do? What do you do with your clients? Hi, Kristen. Um, thank you very much for having me. Um, so as a nutrition and health coach, what I do is I help people to maybe reorganize the foods they're eating, their lifestyle habits, so that they can reach their health goals. So that could be weight loss, it could be better sleep, it could be more energy. Mm -hmm. um, and very often as people maybe get to their 40s and beyond, they start noticing little niggling health problems and they're like oh dear what's that now and where's that coming from um, and maybe they start taking a look at how they're living and what they're eating and that might be a time when they want to find out a little bit more. I know and I feel like especially now with the past seven months the pandemic you hear a lot of people say oh I put on the COVID-19 or you know the stress eating and and that kind of anxiety I think turn, looks different in in different people. Yeah, so this is where I really love the coaching part of what I do, um, because food isn't really just, there's an awful lot of people who don't just eat to live, um, eat to live, yeah, that's, I'm making sure I'm saying that the right way, because it's eat to live and live to eat, and um, so at the moment, because we have so many ready meals and processed foods and everything you can just reach for it and eat it straight away there's so many foods you can eat without preparing them mm -hmm. so that can affect a lot of people because the food is constantly there and then you add stress on top of that and for the last few months it's extra stress and so people can get very kind of wound up and to help relieve that stress they can reach for food or they can reach for alcohol um, and because the food is so easy to eat they generally don't reach for an apple or strawberries they generally eat, reach for the biscuits and the crisps and there is some um, there is a reason in that you're not going mad um, our body does crave sugar and fat when we're stressed because it gives us comfort and it gives us a quick energy boost so there is a reason why we reach for the um, for the sugars and the fats mm. um, but it's just to help people to understand what food is, what real food is, what real food does to your body to support your body and the amazing benefits you get from that. Mm -hmm. And what processed food is doing to your body, the harm it can cause to your body, especially over long term. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that. And as they get older and they have some health problems, they think, oh, I'm just getting old, it happens to everybody. But it doesn't just happen to everybody, you know? Yeah. And I yeah. think you're right too, it's that, you know, after you turn 40, I feel like after I turned 40, you know, there's just, there's so much that's happening within the woman's body, I think, but then I think with everybody's bodies, you know, our metabolism is different. And I think it is so important now, the self care. So is this something that you've always been interested in? I know you have a very extensive background. And I feel like, Grania is the expert of the human body and the expert of health. So tell us a little bit about, you know, this is something, um, your passions and, and how, how you got to be here. Okay, so um, I was talking about this only a few weeks ago and um, I didn't realize that I've actually had a real interest in health and how our body feels for actually a much longer time than I realized. So I was in my 20s, I studied aromatherapy, reflexology, massage. I later on, years later, I went on maybe my late 20s, early 30s, studied craniosacral therapy. I then went on and I did equine massage, so that's massaging horses. So mm. I used to massage horses, competition horses and their riders. 
Um, I have always used essential oils. I love essential oils. I used to use them for massage. I use them on my own horses. I've used them with my kids, always growing up, coughs and colds. And you know what? They usually start coughing just when you're trying to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. And they cough all night. And the next morning you kind of say to them, oh my goodness, he coughed all night. And they were, they're like, do you like? Because they just slept. And you're awake all night kind of thinking, if they don't stop coughing soon, I'm going to go mad. <laughs> so, um, you know, they really work. And then during the last few months with all this stress that's going on, they're very, very helpful to help people to just de-stress and to relax. They're great for um, helping you to concentrate. Mm. You know, they work. I mean, they're made from herbs and, you know, herbs have so many benefits and they extract the oils from the different parts and they really do have so many benefits. So Mm. I love that as well. Um, I'm excited to learn about that from you because I just started learning a little bit about essential oils. And for me, I just love the smell. And mm -hmm. so I'm I'm excited to learn about how I can help my children and and myself. And what what would be like your top tips for that stress management? Because I know that's one of your specialties is within stress management. And I feel like even, I have to say, I've always been pretty even keeled. I, I, I handle stress well. This is a very stressful time and I need some support. Like, how do you handle all this stress? Um, because it, it does affect the way that you, your reactions, right? So what would be some of your tips for stress management? So first of all, I would say that like you, I was always a very laid back person. Take it as it comes. I wouldn't worry about anything. And I could never really understand why other people would stress over things. I'm like, Seriously, why are you stressing? And some people are so laid back, they're really horizontal. Other people, we all know them, they're stress heads. They go around like this all the time. Um, so where does it come from? It can be a little bit part of who we are, but a lot of it can do with our life experiences as well. If we've been through any traumatic experiences and stressful experiences, we can tend to react a little bit stronger than each time a little bit more stress gets piled mm-hmm. on top of us. So we really need to do, first of all, pay attention to how we might feel stressed, but pay attention to how you're reacting to people and situations. And then that will tell you what's going on inside you. Mm-hmm. So you pay attention to, to that. Um, and then we really do, and it can be hard for some people, but we really do need to just stop and breathe. Breathing exercises are amazing. They physically make a difference to your heartbeat. They physically make a difference to your blood pressure and they really just help slow us on down. There is an actual physical reaction when we stop and we slow down and we breathe deeply. What's your favorite breathing technique? Because I feel like I have two that I always tell my parents, but what's your favorite? Well, but if people have never done them before, there is one very, very simple one. And that is basically just breathing into the count of four and breathing out to the count of four. And you can use that in any situation because that's a very balancing breathing technique. Mm -hmm. And when you um, count that breath work and when you listen to yourself breathing to your own breath, it helps draw your mind away from what's going on around you and brings you into yourself. Mm. It's also important, uh, Kristen, that we don't just do that real shallow breathing that we that we all do because we don't realize we're too busy. Yes. Um, you look at a baby breathing, their whole belly will rise when they're breathing and fall. And we don't really do that anymore as adults unless we intentionally do it. So mm. you need to sit up tall enough to allow that breath to come down into your body instead of slouching. Or you can lie down. And when you breathe, if you put a hand on your belly and breathe deep enough to allow your belly to rise, you're bringing in that deep breath. Mm. And it's lovely. So that's, that's a very simple one. And then when you have that, you can then do my other one that I really like as well is the four, seven, eight technique. Have you ever yes, heard? Of that's the one I know, the yoga breath. Mm-hmm. It's really, really nice one. It really will calm you down. So you breathe into the count of four and then you hold your breath for the count of seven. Now, a lot of people might not be able to do that. If they've yeah. never done it, it is hard. It's challenging for me. Yeah. So um, you can always start with breathing in for the count of two, holding for the count of four and breathing out for the count of four. You know, you can start off with shorter breaths. Whatever you can do, but focusing but, uh, on the breath, right? Focus on the breath is the main thing. And when you're holding your breath, don't go and hold it, you know, breathe in and stay relaxed and just count 
to the count of seven and then breathe out to the count of eight. That's yeah. so helpful. It's so helpful. Yeah, it's really now, do you work with all different type of people? Do you mostly work with women? Who, who are there special conditions that? Okay, so first of all, I mainly work with women. Uh, but of course, women have husbands and brothers and, you know, friends. So I, I do work with anybody who wants to make changes to their lifestyle and to their diet. But I mainly work with women 40s, 50s. That's when, like you said, all those changes can start happening in women's bodies and they can end up having quite a few or you know, quite a few of these little niggling problems that they go to the doctor. He tells them they're fine because medically everything is fine, but they're not feeling fine. Right. <laughs> You know, they've got, they're like, oh my goodness, everything's falling apart, what's going on? And it's that change of hormones. So there's a lot we can do with our food and with our lifestyle that will really help to balance those hormones. Mm -hmm. They're going to change anyways. We can't stop them changing. But right. we can help to keep them in a much more balanced state and make that change much, much easier and much less stressful. And So, so helpful. So helpful yeah. to know. And it is, and... Um, I just had a birthday yesterday and I turned 44 and I feel like I'm a proud 44 year old, but 44, like I'm in my mid forties now. And th that's the conversations I'm having with a lot of my friends and colleagues. And, and we have to be so much more conscious of what we're eating, what we're doing. And, um, you know, the spring was definitely a, a very difficult time when the pandemic hit and that lockdown but I feel like right now I live in New England in America and it, the weather's beautiful. So I'm using every opportunity to get out in nature and to exercise. Yeah. And I've been trying to tell my parents, my moms to exercise. So what would be like your top four tips, top, Grania's top four tips of, of what we can do now to, to stay healthy, to stay well? Okay, so exercise is great and getting outside is great. And yeah. um, the one thing I would really say about exercise, um, some people don't like exercise and some people love it. And some people think, oh gosh, I'm not going to talk to her because she's going to tell me I have to exercise. <laughs> but one thing you have to get straight is exercise does not have to be running 10K or lifting heavy weights or doing any fancy classes. Exercise can be going out for a two kilometer walk or in, in America, a two mile walk. Right. Okay. So it can be going for a short walk. It can be just walking at your own pace in a very relaxed way for 20 minutes, three times a week. Yep. That can do more for somebody who's stressed than an hour in the gym will do. Because and I feel like a lot of moms will say, I just don't have time. I don't have time to exercise. And, and like you said, it's 20 minutes. It's yep just getting outside, even just doing the breathing. I do the breaths of joy every morning. It's part of my morning routine. Just that is movement, it's breathing. And if I don't get my exercise in, at least I did some heavy breathing like that. Yeah, yeah. Or even just going out and doing a few minutes in your garden, just to connect with nature. It's really important. And I think it's important that people actually do actually set aside those few minutes. If you can't do 20 minutes, if it sounds like a mountain, start with five. Mm -hmm. 8 to 10 15 and then 20 right. get there slowly I don't believe in forcing people to do something that's just not going to work mm -hmm. you've got to set yourself small goals that you know that you can reach because we've got to succeed at these things yeah and it makes not you feel better. better so exercise is one what are, what are some other ones and getting outside is is definitely number one take some time to de-stress like we were talking about doing your deep breathing try and take five minutes away from your kids away from your husband, no matter how much you love him and no matter how much you love your kids, away from everybody. Go away for five minutes somewhere quiet. Lock yourself in the bathroom if you have to. Yeah. Or, or get into the closet, especially if you have one of the walk-in ones. Close the door, turn off your phone, don't tell anybody where you are. Take five minutes to yourself. That's your time. Take it. So yeah. that's very important, I think. And you probably, I'm sure, know this when you're teaching and helping your clients with their, you know, their parenting and their kids, you've got to de-stress. We, uh, the, we are the number one priority. You know, we Amazing. as moms, we are the number one priority. We have to be taking care of ourselves, and, and that five minutes. And there is a bathroom technique. 
And because most bathrooms have a lock, you literally lock the door and you give yourself <laughs> that five minutes. That's a good reminder. I remember it when my kids were small. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so your exercise, your five minutes to yourself and um, drink your water. And for anybody who lives in colder climates or for anybody who it gets cold over the winter, because in summertime, it's easy to drink your water. Yes, <laughs> it can be easy to drink your water. So some tips for winter time if you don't like drinking your water. You can drink warm water instead of cold water. You can add lemon to it. You can have sparkling water with lime. Just don't have sparkling water for all your water for the day, but you can have it intermittently throughout your day. You can have herbal teas, which have no sugar added to them, just herbs and your warm water. So get your water into you. It's recommended that we drink 1.5 to 2 liters of water per day. Okay. That's a lot more than I think people are getting. It is an awful lot more than most people are getting. Mm -hmm. and it can be difficult, and especially if you're not used to it. I always tell people to try and start with one liter a day. Okay, but we want two. We want two liters. Or, or 1.5. Okay. So 1.5 to two. But if you can get up to 1.5, you will really feel the benefits. Our body needs water to produce energy, to detoxify itself, to keep our skin clear, to keep our mind clear and focused. It's very important for our health because... We lose a lot of it through sweat, through breathing. And um, if you're a lady who's having hot flushes, if you're a person who's exercising strenuously and sweating, you definitely need to be drinking your 1.5 to two liters. Very, very helpful. Yeah, it okay. is. Yeah. It Any other to last clean. tips? Because I know we're probably gonna get going now. Any other last tips? One more tip I would say to everybody. Remember your mother used to say, eat your veg and eat your greens. I could talk to you for quite a while about the benefits of vegetables. Yes. But I will say one benefit I will say to you, try and eat your cruciferous veg. So your broccoli, your cauliflower, your cabbage, your kale. The reason being that they help your liver. They support your liver and mm. your liver is a detoxifying organ. So it'll help your body detox. And we all need help in detoxing because of the modern world that we live in. There's a lot of pollutants around. And for any ladies who are having any hot flushes, it will definitely help as well because it helps to balance your estrogen. Oh, so helpful. So helpful. Well, I'm excited. And um, tell us where we can find you. I said I'm a part of your Fit for School program. Yeah. So tell everybody where they can find more information. And I'm really looking forward to being in you know, my best health with, um, with your guidance. So I appreciate it. But how can everybody else find you? Okay, so my website is nutritionandhealthwithgrania.ie. And I am getting a new website built at the moment, which I'm very excited about. But I do have my old one is still there up and running and all the information is on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm also on Facebook, Nutrition and Health with Grania on Facebook. And mm -hmm. um, so they're the two places you can find me. And like you say, at the moment, my fit for school, I have a few people going through that at the moment that is ongoing. So you can join in with that at any stage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, get going with that. That is to support your immune health and your brain health. So I think we all need it at this moment in time with the COVID restrictions and with the winter coming in, we all need to support our bodies. Definitely, definitely. And I don't even think we said where you're from because I'm, you know, in the United States and yes, Grania yes. is in an, another part of the world. Where are you from, Grania? So I'm in Ireland, the little Emerald Isle. Um, and I'm in a town called Gorey, which is in County Wexford. So I would be about an hour's drive from Dublin City, the capital here in Ireland. Um, and the, we are called the Sunny Southeast down here in Wexford. So we do get quite a bit of nice weather, often much nicer than the rest of the country. Um, but yes, we're heading into winter here now as well. But the weather is, it's a beautiful day today. The sun is shining and it's nice, crisp autumn air. It's its really nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was lovely talking to you, Grania. And I hope whoever's out there listening, um, I hope you can continue to take care of yourself. And I think we need to remember to prioritize ourselves um, during this time. And I'm excited to learn about helping my family to eat healthier too. So I really appreciate all your guidance and bye for now, Kristen Anchor, kristenanchor.com. 
your parent empowerment specialist. And I hope this empowered some moms and dads out there today. Thank you, Grania. Thank you for having me, Kristen. Take oh, care. You are welcome. Bye-bye.